so the growth rate is 100 percent but the growth factor is how much will you have well you'll have 200 percent because you'll have grown by 100 and so as decimals these would be 1.00 and 2.00 or simply 1 and 2 now the same thing applies for what we call decay decay is just the opposite of growth so for example you might say so suppose there uh, the number of cars in the parking lot drops by five percent every minute for a show that has ended there are initially three hundred cars in the parking lot well let's think about this again so we're we're multiplying by the growth factor we don't want to multiply by the growth rate because then we have to reduce it um, off of the original amount so if this is your minutes and this is the number of cars well you the zeroth minute or initially you have 300 cars but one minute later you're gonna have five percent less so some people again would take 300 times 0 0.05 and then add it back to the 300 well that's an that's a it's an okay way to do it but what would be more efficient well let's think about what we have instead of what we're losing so if we start with hundred percent and we decay by five percent well that means that we're cutting back this way right so now we we cut off five percent how much is left well it's the difference between one hundred percent and removing five percent so i have ninety five percent left so rather than to have to go through this process i could simply take three hundred times point nine five and that should give me the same thing as taking five percent of three hundred so i lose fifteen cars in one minute and then saying 300 minus 15 would tell me that there are 285 cars left. If I simply take 300 times 0.95, then notice that I get 285, which is the same number I would have gotten the other way. And as you can imagine, the same logic holds here that to find the second minute, 300 times 0.95 squared, the third minute, 300 times 0.95 to the third, and so on and so forth. So um, to generalize this more in terms of what these exponential functions are looking like, because again, if you, if you took the ratio of 285 to 300, for example, what should you get? Well, if the ratio is constant, you're getting the, the amount of your decay factor. So this tells me that the new amount, the, the car, n new number of cars divided by the old number of cars, that ratio is 95%. And so same thing that I should be able to do between all the, the outputs and get exactly 95% because that's how much they're growing by. So if you work backwards, that's how much the new value is of the lesser value, of the previous value, excuse me. So in the components of this exponential model, we needed two things. We needed an initial value and oftentimes we know the rate, whether it's growth or decay. And then we need to convert to decay factor, oh, excuse me, to the factor, whether it's decay or growth. And what do we do? Well, to get the output, we had to take the initial value, well, very bad misspelling, we had to take that initial value, we had to multiply it by the factor, and how many times did we multiply it by the factor? Well, let's take a look back. We multiplied it based on what the current value of the input was. So, why don't we just call that exponent input? That way, whatever input value you want to know the output for, that's how many times you're going to multiply by the growth factor. So for us, to know the number of cars in the parking lot, we took the initial value, which was 300 cars, we multiplied it by the decay factor of 0.95, and we multiplied it by that factor um, depending on how many minutes had passed. In the earlier example, we started with um, the number of pennies we'd get would be on the, on the basis of three pennies initially, um, the f growth factor was two, and depended on the number of days that had passed. For the balance, started with 100, grew by 10%, um, depending on the number of years that have passed. And that's really the essence behind working with exponential functions.